2020 brought changes none of us could have envisioned. Before the coronavirus brought our world to a near standstill, fires engulfed Australia and the Pacific Northwest. Discussions began in earnest to address systemic injustices. And sadly, we lost many loved ones and cultural icons. Businesses closed, some permanently. Classrooms went virtual, and we all had to learn to adapt to remote environments. Hope is on the horizon. COVID vaccines are being distributed. The first woman on a major party ticket was elected as the Vice President of the United States. Some schools have returned to in-person classes, while others have adapted to a hybrid schedule. However, 2021 will bring new challenges as businesses and organizations look at their changing economic landscape and strategize how to increase their customer base and revenue. Businessmen in 1920 faced challenges unique to their times and began looking for ways to extend the tourist season in Atlantic City following Labor Day. The Atlantic City Fall Frolic was an event created to encourage tourists to stay in town past the summer season. For 1921, they decided to hold a bather's review on the beach. It was a huge success, according to the history of the Miss America organization. Today we are and always will be more than just our looks. Miss America today is a role model. She's as intelligent as she is smart, and she's not afraid to voice her opinion. She's got it all together, but isn't afraid to let her hair down and get her hands dirty. She's confident in how she presents herself, but is always relatable. When the next generation sees her, they think, I'm going to be her one day. My name is Sierra Marie Bond, and I currently serve as Miss Southwest. I am a part of the Miss Kansas organization, which means I'm a local title holder who intends to compete for Miss Kansas, the title of Miss Kansas, next June. I'm from El Dorado, Kansas. I graduated from El Dorado High School, and we are currently going into our 150th birthday of El Dorado, so it's very exciting in this historic year to be supporting a community um, one that I'm from, and two that is doing something so cool this year to celebrate 150th years. Something else that's really fun about El Dorado that also ties into the legacy of the Miss America organization is the first Miss Kansas to wear the sash is actually from El Dorado as well. So it's really exciting to be from a town, again, that's celebrating its 150th birthday in the same year that Miss America is celebrating its 100th anniversary celebration and to be from the same hometown as the first Miss Kansas to wear the sash. Her name was Pauline Sayer. Even before Pauline wore the Miss Kansas sash, there were tons of different local fair festival pageants that were going on across the country, including one very close to my heart, which was the Harvey County Wheat Queen competition. My great grandmother uh, competed in the scholarship competition during the Wheat Festival. Her intention was to win scholarship funds to go on to a two-year business college uh, after her high school graduation. And it's really exciting to say that she was the 1930 Harvey County Wheat Queen, and she won. In order to compete at Miss America, you need to win a state title. And in order to compete at a state title, you need to qualify with a local title. So in some states, you apply for a local title through different um, paperwork and requirements, and in other states you compete for a local title. I competed for and won Miss Southwest in September of 2019. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the new Miss Southwest Kansas 2020 who will be the recipient of a $2,000 scholarship. Our new Miss Southwest Kansas 2020 is Sierra Bond. With my title, I earned $2,000 in scholarships. I think that brings my total to around almost $8,000 that I've been able to raise to continue my education. And the Miss America organization is one of the largest providers of scholarships to young women in the country. And so it's been great to be able to do something I enjoy, promote causes that I care about, 
and continue my education. My job as a local title holder is to make an impact on my community and partner with my community to serve, to advertise, to promote, and to garner goodwill. And so I do that both as Miss Southwest in the 22 counties of the Southwest region, but also in my hometown where I'm from. It's four hours away, but I'm still able to make a difference now virtually across the state of Kansas. And it's really important to me as a title holder, we focus on promoting local, about supporting small business owners, about improving the lives of the students around us, about encouraging others to travel to our destinations that we've got right here in our hometowns. As Miss Kansas, my job will be to continue that on a statewide level, to talk to all of our business owners. I'll be able to travel to all of our different tourist destinations in Kansas and talk to the people who make them great. I'll be able to travel to different schools across Kansas and to empower the next generation of innovators. And once I get to Miss America, I'll be able to show them how great Kansas is, how great our industry is, how great our students are, how great our small businesses is, and how you really can be a really great travel destination right here in Kansas. And as Miss America, I'll be able to show any young woman that they can do the exact same thing in their hometown too. My name is Bailey Smith and I currently hold the title of Miss El Dorado 2020. My grandma actually took me to my very first pageant in 2011. It was the local pageant of Miss Frontier. And as soon as it was done, I looked at her and I said, I want to do that next year. The first year I remember kind of working with some of the girls that were my age and kind of making friends and the week of the pageant, it was always the funnest because you'd get to hang out with the girls the whole week and you'd get to practice routines. You'd get to be goofy on the side when you guys got to take breaks. When I was 13, I competed in my very first pageant. It was a fair festival pageant, so not quite as structured as a franchised local within the Miss America organization. And I was one of only two girls in my age category, brace-faced, 13, frizzy hair, young girl, competing against a girl who had competed in pageants for a long time. She had a modeling contract. She was 16. I thought she was the coolest girl ever. And I was like, why am I here? <laughs> She's totally gonna win. And she did. I did get second place. I thought at that time, there's no way I'm doing this again. This was a fun experience and also my last experience. Um, then when I was 15, I started thinking about college a little bit more and I realized mm, scholarships would be really nice to have. And so I decided to compete again in that festival pageant. And I was the older, on the older end of my age bracket the second time I competed and I did end up winning and I won a nice scholarship to go with that to my local community college. That kind of bit the bug for me. I realized, oh wait, I actually do like this. I do enjoy earning scholarship dollars um, and this is something that I can see myself pursuing. I competed as a teen at Miss Kansas's Outstanding Teen in 2013. From there, I really got to see what it was like to be a part of the Miss America organization, to meet other young women, not only pursuing the titles of Miss Kansas and Miss Kansas's Outstanding Teen, but also developing themselves, earning scholarship, performing their talent, and just doing incredible acts of community service. And it really inspired me to keep being involved in something like that. I competed as a Miss in 2014, and that was also my high school graduating year, my first year of college, so I decided to take some time off. I had some life events happen throughout college that uh, pageantry really wasn't on my mind. It wasn't a priority for me, and so I did need to take some time away. My freshman year, for example, the three days after my mom moved me into the dorm, she was hospitalized. And so having the first emotions of being in a new university plus thinking about your mom being in the hospital and you're miles away and there's nothing you can do. My sophomore year, my father was diagnosed with leukemia and he battled cancer throughout my entire sophomore year. My junior year, I faced being homeless. I had trouble being able to afford attending classes and paying rent. So 
I worked five part-time jobs, five different part-time jobs at one time. As you can imagine, my grades were not the best. My social life was not the best. My health was not the best. Um, but I did what I had to do so that I had a place to sleep and I could still be enrolled in classes. My senior year, I was very ready to be done. Um, I considered quitting a couple, quite a few times actually throughout my senior year, but I decided that I wasn't gonna let college win <laughs> and I wanted to change my major. And so I did. Now I am in a program that I do really enjoy engineering technology management and I focus on empathetic human-centered design understanding the human understanding their decision making and creating solutions that truly benefit them effectively and efficiently so about the time that I was thinking about quitting college my first senior year as I call it I started thinking about why I'm attending college and I thought about why do I want to keep what seems like an enormous obstacle? Every year something seems to come up that makes me want to, to drop out. Why do I keep being so stubborn about it? And I thought about my involvements that I was able to have throughout my college career. One of them was helping third through fifth graders learn how to build robotics using Legos. And I had the greatest time teaching them. I'd go into their classroom every other Thursday and I worked with third graders and I worked with fifth graders who were starting to understand algorithms and wanted to make their robots dance. And I realized that I really enjoyed engineering, but more than that, I really enjoyed teaching others their potential within the realm of engineering. And so when I was thinking about what I wanted to change my major to, I thought about the things that I've done and the things that I would like to continue doing. And so I'm, I'm really enjoy managing. I like not bossing people around, but, you know, showing them how to do things and empowering them to continue that project even when I'm not there. I also happen to be a violinist. And so I, over time, have learned that engineering and being a violinist are not very different activities. They're actually extremely similar and they go hand in hand. So when you perform violin, you are pulling a bow across the strings, but you're doing it in a scientific way. You're putting your fingers on, on the strings to create notes, mathematical harmonies. You're doing things because science and the arts, they're not different at all. They're infinitely and intrinsically related. And I had all these thoughts going on in my head and I thought, you know, I can't drop out of school because clearly there is something here that needs to be talked about and taught about. And it's something in me that's really, really exciting. So I sat down in a Jason's Deli, uh, in, the, in the back booth of a Jason's Deli, and I was just writing down all these ideas. And I went to the bathroom, and as I was washing my hands, the phrase, let's go full steam ahead, popped in my head. And I was like, where did this come from? And I thought, steam, where do I know that? One time at Miss Kansas's Outstanding Teen in the interview, a judge asked me if I had ever heard of STEAM education, and I said, no, I've heard of STEM education. What does the A stand for? Agriculture? And she went, no, it stands for arts. You should look into it. And so I remember walking out of the interview thinking, wow, I didn't know her question at all. I totally bombed that. That was awful. Then the let's go full steam ahead concept popped in my head, and I realized A, arts, violinist. I do that already. Engineering, I do that already. Science, I do that already. Technology, I do that already. And I've taken so many math classes, I do that already. STEAM just makes sense, not just for me, but how I empower my third through fifth graders in LEGO Robotics. I empower my collegians that I help with their transition through their first year college experience. I do that through STEAM education. The way that I help tutor other individuals in chemistry and calculus, I put them in real world experiences that are STEAM education. Creative problem solving is so important to STEAM education, but it's also so important to life. You have to be able to creatively problem solve and be a critical thinker. STEAM education provides that. So for me, 
I started thinking of these passions and I started thinking of let's go full steam ahead and I didn't know where it was going to go and I didn't know what I was going to do with it. I just know I enjoyed doing it. And then I remembered that I was going to have a scholarship uh, bill due to pay tuition for the next semester and I thought, I'm poor, how do I pay that? And then I thought, hmm, I have something that sounds similar to a social initiative or a platform and I need scholarship money. Those are two pretty big facets of the Miss America organization. Maybe I should consider competing again. And so I did. I competed. So Let's Go Full Steam Ahead was born July 2018. And come September 2018, I competed for and won Miss Augusta 2019 was the title. And I went on to compete at Miss Kansas 2019 uh, in June of 2019. And took Let's Go Full Steam Ahead with me, and it was really eye-opening for me to see how Miss America has continued to stay relevant, and how Miss America has continued to empower women through the use of scholarships and community service. Even though I had to take some time away because of life reasons, it was still there for me when I needed it to provide scholarships and to help me find passion when it was hard to find. I grew up at Sierra as one of my biggest role models in this program. I remember there was one time I was backstage right before we were getting ready to walk on for something and she was talking about like her experience at Miss Kansas. And at that time, like I was not very confident in myself. And I was like starting to talk to her about it. And she said, Bailey, like you just have to have confidence in yourself. She's like, you own the stage. You're beautiful in your own skin. and. I will never forget that moment because at that moment, I think everything kind of clicked. So growing up with a role model, but also having girls under you, being able to be their role model as well is what's so amazing about growing up in a local community pageant. You have role models, but you can also be role models. And another thing I've learned is that just because they're younger than you doesn't mean you can't learn anything from them. And so I love how we are all at different age ranges, but we all still have something to put on the table. So growing up with them and then becoming some of my biggest supporters is probably the best thing about growing up with pageant girls. I had no idea pageants were a thing when I was younger. I mean, I may have loosely seen a Miss America competition on TV. I was raised mostly around boys. All my parents' friends had boys, and so I was the only girl, and so I was one of the boys. I climbed trees and had scraped knees and wore ponytail all of third grade. I never imagined pageantry for, was for me. But, you know, thinking back, if someone would have asked me what my dream job was when I was five, I would have said a princess because, of course it is. I had the world figured out I was gonna be a princess. My parents and teachers thought I should consider a more realistic route and I was very fortunate that they recognized my love and passion and ability to do science and math and so they tried multiple times to convince me to go into to engineering and I refused. I thought that was the worst job in the world because I only knew the stereotypes of what make a good engineer and I didn't see myself as that. I saw myself as feminine, artsy, clever, and strong, all what I thought were opposite until I started seeing feminine, clever, strong engineers until I realized that I could be a feminine, artsy, clever, and strong engineer myself. I didn't have a role model in engineering or STEAM to look up to when I was younger, so I had no idea it was an opportunity for me to follow. And I realized much later in my academic pursuits that role models are very important at all junctions for all careers. If you see what you can be when you're younger, the doors begin opening for you and your own potential begins to shine. Hey, uh, so I just want to say I come from a Balkan country. Uh, it's like uh, countries that talk Slavic languages. 
uh, our, my country is really small, Croatia, but it's very beautiful. Just uh, you can search it; it is very beautiful. Uh, I go to a small high school here. We have high schools. Uh, we like have elementary school, and after eight years, we choose what we want to be, and we go to high school for it. So. My mom said, you will go for a computer technician. And I was like, no, no, I can't with boys and... Uh. And so now I go for a computer technician. So I'm like here with 20 boys and one girl besides me. It was like, uh, go cooking, what the... Why did you even came here and stuff like this? So I was like... I was not very encouraged, uh, it was not for me when you hear all of that all the time, but so I started to uh, search on YouTube like um, something about programming, something that will bring me up and be like, okay, I really want to do this and I don't want to, I would just ignore all of that as uh, in my head, in my class and all of that. So when I started to search, there were no YouTubers or anything like that. Uh, women from Balkans, uh, especially from my country, that uh, were talking about uh, engineering, programming or anything, anything like that. Like I said, they are even so, so little of... Uh, girls uh, even in my school that I can look up to or be friends with uh, that are in the same classes so we can uh, we can all share our interests or anything like that so I with my boyfriend I started to volunteer in a uh, in the city li library uh, and it was like you have to uh, you teach kids uh, get kids how to um, do stuff with uh, Arduino um, micro bits or uh, McQueen or stuff like that robot robotics and uh, the plan was like and it was like parents when they go uh, to a city they will bring their kids to us, to us, and we will teach them things in that hour, hour and a half, or how long could they be. Uh, and uh, when we were there, there are there were there was like a little, uh, there was like one little girl, and that's all. That were all of them were boys and. Uh, like their moms came and bring them and. Uh, I was like, why don't parents think that it's good to bring uh, little girls to this and just to try and... I don't know, I was very disappointing in a, in a view... Uh, in, in people's view of girls here, like, this is only for boys. And actually, this is all toys, but... <laughs> So I really got inspired because all of that's just to go to university. I have a year and a half to a university and I already know what I want to study and all of this. And I just want to be someday someone that can inspire other girls. You can do so much things with this and learn so much things that you can help people with it. Why only boys? That's part of why I started Let's Go Full Steam Ahead, to not only highlight the role models that I thought I needed, I definitely needed when I was younger, but also to empower the next generation of innovators and provide them with the resources and confidence that they need to pursue those jobs. Right now, we have a massive gender disparity in the realms of innovative fields. Of all the scientists, technologists, engineers, artists, and mathematicians in the United States today, only one in five of them are women. That's mind-blowing to me that we have such an incredible disparity. That is so many opportunities for innovation that are being lost just because we aren't empowering the next generation of women scientists, of women engineers, of women technicians, of women artists, of women mathematicians, and we aren't showing 
everyone else that these young girls can thrive in those fields too, that they belong in those fields too. Let's Go Full Steam Ahead is focusing on that, not only to help inspire confidence of those innovators, but also to change the landscape so once they get there, it's not as hard to retain them as innovators in the field. Let's Go Full Steam Ahead is a nonprofit focusing on providing STEAM, science, technology, engineering, arts, and math education and engagement to empower the next generation of innovators. So Let's Go Full Steam Ahead focuses on our mission in a variety of ways. The National Science Foundation did a study about why underrepresented minorities weren't pursuing STEAM careers, and they found three main reasons. Reasons first are the stereotypes of what make a good engineer. The second is lack of early exposure in the youth. And the third is lack of self-efficacy. So no belief that they even could do science, let alone once they become a scientist, that they even belong there, a major imposter syndrome problem. So let's go full steam ahead is addressing these three issues through education, engagement, and empowerment. The education component focuses on raising awareness for the opportunities for individuals of all backgrounds to thrive in STEAM careers. So we go into classrooms, camps, college campuses. We've even lobbied at Capitol Hill and within the Board of Education to talk about the different issues that arise in STEAM education. So for example, at the beginning of 2020, I was invited by a coalition of tech companies and advocacy groups to talk about computer science education in Kansas. Previously, uh, computer science education wasn't a focus for Kansas. We were, I believe, the 49th state to adopt any kind of computer science curriculum standards. And uh, there's only 50 states, so we weren't, we weren't forerunners. And it really needed to, to be enhanced. As we learned with the 2020 pandemic, remote learning, computer science education, it is absolutely critical for everyone to understand how to operate a computer and to work remotely and to have internet access. So fortunately, at the beginning of 2020, I was a part of a coalition that got the board to unanimously agree that computer science is a requirement and needs to be addressed and implemented into Kansas schools. So we focus on empowering thought leaders and decision makers to understand the relevancy of STEAM education and how critical it is for our students. The engagement component is a lot more hands-on with students, I think. So we go inside any place that will have us. So classrooms, camps, we go to different community partners. Um, one of my favorite activities is joining up with the Girl Scouts and doing things at Girl Scout camp, where these hands-on STEAM workshops actually go through the science of the homemade lava experiment with the baking soda and vinegar, or we do Lego robotics, where we teach them algorithms and coding. We have a whole bunch of free curriculum that we can either teach inside classrooms, both in person and virtually, or teachers and parents can download on our website as free STEAM opportunities to learn how science and art interacts collectively and still have a fun time learning. So the empowerment component is one of my favorite components. And this is taking both the education and the engagement and really reaching to empower the next generation of innovators. In January of 2020, I began illustrating and eventually publishing Innovators, Women in History Who Have Made Positive Contributions to STEAM. This book is very near and dear to my heart, not only because it tells the story of 15 incredible women within the realms of science, technology, engineering, arts, and math, but it also provides an opportunity for students across the world to engage with these stories. So for every one book sold, one is also donated to a school or a community library so that these students, these next generation of innovators can begin to read those stories and begin to see their own future because of these trailblazers who have paved the way in STEAM fields. After a book is donated, any additional proceeds that come off the cost of the original book are then donated to the Let's Go Full Steam Ahead Scholarship and the Miss America Scholarship Foundation. It's very exciting for me um, as someone who needed scholarships to pursue my STEAM education to be able to give back through uh, the Let's Go Full Steam Ahead Scholarship Award and hopefully help someone else pursue their STEAM educational goals. 
So one of the focuses that I've had in regards to promoting Innovators, the book, is focusing on how I can work with different community partners and grant foundations to help donate as many books as possible. Because again, these books are meant to be read by the next generation of innovators and how can they read them if they're not accessible. So from my great grandmother's story of winning a scholarship to go to a two year business college, all the way down to my story of continuing my engineering education through the Miss America organization, it's been really exciting to watch the continued empowerment of the Miss America organization and its effect on young women across the country throughout the last 100 years. There is so much that happens when the cameras are off and the crown and sash are put away. Join me as I take you inside the historic 100th anniversary of the Miss America organization and together as we journey toward Miss Kansas 2021.